Okay, what we're looking at here is a CAN USB 4 board that has been uh, put together as a programming board for the K-series processors for CAN modules. Uh, in particular, 25K80 and 26K80 type processors. There has been a problem trying to put the CAN compute firmware on there with the Picket 3 and the MP Lab X uh, IPE version 5.2, where I lay down the code, but uh, if I do it on a board that's already got a crystal on it, then firmware appears to get corrupted and it doesn't play nicely. What I've found is if I program a board, program a processor on a board that doesn't have an oscillator at all, then uh, I can verify it and everything's happy. Uh, the modifications to the CAN USB 4 are pretty trivial. There is uh, there's a slide switch you can see uh, over over here, and that is a power switch for turning the regulator on. Now, the track that comes underneath the sl slide switch just here, uh, I put a cut in that track because that's the track through this board to be powered from the five volt rail out of USB. Uh, it's also connected to the output of the regulator, so it makes no sense switching from the power, uh, the 12 volt power coming in here to the output of the regulator. So I just cut it so that the switch just goes open when I have the switch in that position. I just look for where could I get a power lead connected. So up the top here, I just put a piece of um, silk uh, tinned copper wire with a bit of heat shrink over it uh, into the input side of the regulator hole. So there's two wires in that hole. I came down here and picked up a pin that I could get the, that I followed tracks around and found it popped up here in this other uh, USB header. Then I can get a resistor in for the power lead. The power lead for output of the regulator was simple. I just found a point here on the five volt rail and came across here to uh, what is one of the crystal pins for the second pick that's on this board and into the into the lead, and the lead one pin goes to ground, so life is easy. The other things that are on the board, the usual green and yellow LEDs that you have with a uh, CBUS board, and they'll flash away merrily when we're programming. The only other changes here, um, I couldn't fit both resistors for these LEDs on top of the board, so one of them is underneath. And there's also a 10K resistor comes across the back here to go from the uh, five volt rail to the memory clear line. So it holds it up. That has to be there. Otherwise the whole thing won't work. So that too is underneath the board. I'll just show you that now. So that's all the magic that happens underneath. And yeah, they are 10K resistors there, and one, one of them is a 10K resistor for a LED. It just happens to be that that's what I needed for the LEDs that I've got. There's a Picket 3 there. MP Lab XID IPE is running on the PC, and this is the Merg header for programming. And I'll just put that guy on there. Okay, there's no power to that socket at the moment, so I'm gonna put my PIC 25K80 in there and connect it up. Popped up in the ZIF socket, right? Still popped up in the ZIF socket. We'll see if that's happy when we go to use it. The yellow dot that's on there is just a convention I use. The 26K80s, I put a red dot on. The uh, 25k 80s I put a yellow dot on and the 2480s I put a blue dot on because they can all be used on some CBUS boards. So I know what I've got as soon as I look at the processor. Okay, um, now we're gonna power up the board. So that provides us power to the, to the pick. And I'm just gonna share my MP Lab window now. MP Lab X. Screen one. Okay, so now you can see we're all set to go with a 25K80 uh, programming. I'm going to load the firmware for this. 
sorry if the camera glitched there. It's actually a, a uh, iPhone using a bit of software to drive it and it's going to play up again. X. And I'm going to load the cam and compute firmware. First of all, I'm going to connect to this processor. I've had this trouble once or twice with this board that zip socket does not connect real well. So I'll kill the power and I'll try to settle this back down in the socket. We'll try again. There we go, it found the pick that time. So now I'm just going to do a blank check on that pick. Green and yellow LEDs are flashing away as it does that. And it says blank check complete, device is blank. I'd like to get a real camera for there, but guess what? You can't get one for love nor money. The, the moment you can't get a, a cam link. Okay, so next I'm going to uh, program that chip. Okay, all done. There's the, the um, checksum. And we're going to do a verify on it. And the verification comes back successful. It doesn't come back successful if you try and program it in a board that's got a crystal in it ready to run. Uh, it appears that the code changes some MIGPROM values uh, pretty much straight away. That camera's given me the irrits, but um, the demo is done. Other than I'll do a disconnect here, turn the power off to the socket, and I can remove the pick. And that's good to go. And then I've got, then I can do another one um, using the same sequence we just saw. Why they corrupt? I don't know. Um, that this solves the problem and lets me put the pick on the board and get going is all I needed to do. Sorry about the camera, guys. That's it. We're done. And as soon as I can find the thing to stop share, uh, stop record, I'm done. Thanks, guys.